So kingdom fungi is the third kingdom. We have already looked at kingdom monera and kingdom protoctista. Now, when you look at the kingdom fungi, we need to ask ourselves, who are the members? Which are the organisms that are found in this kingdom? We want to look at the examples. We have common examples that we know. We know the mushrooms. We know the yeast. Uh, we have the toadstools. Rhizopus. ETC. Those are examples of fungi that we have. And we are going to look at uh, the characteristics of this fungi and then of course look at uh, what are the benefits that are associated with kingdom uh, fungi. So let's start by looking at the characteristics. One of the characteristics, one of, the characteristics of kingdom fungi is that uh, the, king, uh, the, the fungi are made of a basic unit that is known as a hypha. So basic unit of a fungi or the smallest unit of a fungi is a hypha. Into brackets, hyphae in plural. So hyphae is uh, the plural of hypha. Now, what does this hypha mean? You'll find that uh, most fungi, they have filaments. There are some filaments that grow into the substrate. We refer to them as rhizoids. We have others that go on the surface horizontally on the substrate. We refer to them as stolons. We have others that grow vertically. We refer to them as sporangiophores. So all those filaments, they are the ones that we are saying the basic unit is called a hypha or the smallest unit is called a hypha. Many are called hyphae. Now, when those hyphae are collectively, yeah, they are collectively merged together, they form a vegetative body that is known as a mycelium. So we can say that collectively, collectively, uh, the hyphae form a vegetative mass called a mycelium called a mycelium. Now, to understand that better, we are going to have a diagram of a mycelium. A diagram of a mycelium uh, consisting of several hyphae. As I have said, there are those that grow downwards into the substrate. There are those that grow on the surface. For example, if it is bread, those molds that grow on the bread. In fact, uh, we can even add here that uh, another example of uh, uh, kingdom fungi is the rhizopus mold so that it is easier to identify. So rhizopus is a type of a mold. For example, the bread mold, the mold that grows on the surface of bread when it becomes stale. Now, so we'll have a a diagram here. So we have those uh, fungi that grow vertically and then at the tip they are swollen. We have the part that grows deeply onto the substrate. We have the one that grows horizontally.
So that's an example of, uh, of a fungus. It's an example of a fungus. Fungus is singular, fungi is plural. So the vertical part of the hyphae, we refer to it as the sporangiophore. Sporangiophore. It's vertical. Then the part that grows on the substrate, this is the substrate, e.g. the bread, hmm? e.g. the bread mold. So we have the part that grows into the bread, we refer to them as the rhizoids. They look like roots. Uh, then at the tip of the sporangiophore, there is a swelling, we refer to that as the sporangium. And that sporangium is the one that contains the spores, is the one that bears the spores. And then when this sporangium matures, it bursts open to release the spores. So this one you can see that this is a busted, this is a busted sporangium. And it releases the spores to release spores. So you can see the spores being uh, released. Then we have the horizontal. This is called the stolon. So the entire mass is what we are calling a mycelium. So this one is a mycelium of, this is a mycelium of a rhizopus, rhizopus fungus. This is a mycelium of a rhizopus uh, fungus. So as I've said, it's made of uh, vertical filaments known as sporangiophores, whose at the tip are swollen uh, to form what is called the sporangium. And the work of the sporangium is that it bears the spores. And when this sporangium matures, it bursts open, releasing the spores, and those spores are the ones that are carried by the wind from one point to another. So we have spores all over, even in the air. We have spores because those spores have come from different fungi. And that's why once they land onto a certain food substance, they will just uh, germinate. So the stolons are horizontal, <coughs> like I have said, <coughs> sorry, and they help the, uh, the fungus to spread, to form a mass from one point to the other. Then the rhizoids, these ones are for anchorage. They are for anchorage. And that means to anchor onto a substrate. They help to anchor onto the substrate and therefore absorb the nutrients from that particular, uh, from that particular substrate. And I've given an example of bread. So I want us to have a recap of what we have uh, learned as far as the kingdom fungi is concerned. First, we have said that it is the third uh, kingdom of taxonomy, uh, having learned about Monera and Protoctista. Uh, then we have examples, things like the mushrooms that we know, things like the yeast that is used for bread making, toadstools, rhizopus, which is a mold that grows on food such as bread, or such as stale bread. And we have said that in that first characteristic, that the basic unit, the smallest unit of a fungus or of a fungi is called a hypha. In plural is hyphae. We just add an E. That's the plural. And uh, those hypha or those hyphae collectively, they form a mass that is called a mycelium a vegetative mass that is called a mycelium. And I have drawn a mycelium of a rhizopus fungi here. Uh, a mycelium of a rhizopus fungus. Let's make this a fungus so that uh, we can show that it is in singular. So in this case, we have seen there are vertical ones. Yeah, the ones that we mainly see, those are sporangiophores. At the tip, they form the sporangium that bears the spores. And we've said that when it is mature, the sporangium bursts to release the spores, as you can see. 
This is a busted sporangium releasing the spores. Then we have the horizontal hyphae. We have the horizontal one. And just uh, adjust a bit. Uh, the horizontal one is referred to as the stolon. It helps the fungus to spread from one point to the other to form a mass. Then finally we have the rhizoids. They look like roots and they are for anchorage. They help the fungus to anchor onto the substrate, onto the food substance in which it is growing. Thank <laughs> you.